Let's go live. Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Frank Signetti Jr. is the uh, offensive coordinator at Boston College. And uh, given the restrictions and the kind of the handcuffs on putting a football team on the field last fall, uh, I'd say the Eagles got A++. And now we're, coach, getting back toward normal. So I can't think of anybody more than football staffs that are excited for the 21 campaign. And you guys were able to have a pretty productive spring. And welcome to the show. Great to have you. Hey, it's great to be here with you guys. So what about this club now? Listen, you got Wes and I last year when we were breaking down BC, you got this new football coach in Halfley. We got this new regime rolled in there. And, I mean, we're looking at big offensive line, those big backs. I said, hey, here we go. BC going to line up, just shove it down your throat. Man, we watch you guys from day one. You're throwing it all over the yard. It's like, who are these guys? You In a really short period of time, you have completely transformed Boston College football. Well, I tell you what, it all starts with Coach Halfley. You know, he's, he's a tremendous leader. He's a tremendous person. Uh, he's building such a positive culture here at Boston College. Um, he, he's got love in his heart. Everything is about putting the players in a position to be successful on and off the field. You know, offensively, we have a, tr- we have a tremendous group of guys to coach. We've got a tremendous coaching staff on offense. Uh, we have years of experience coming from the National Football League. So when you take a look at what we're doing on offense, it's a, it's a National Football League system, and we want to make sure that we're putting all our players in a position to be successful. So when we took a look at uh, our players, the offensive line, the perimeter that we had and that we have coming back, and then getting the quarterback in the portal, you know, we were able to play wide open. And the beautiful thing about Phil was not only could he play in the pocket and work through his progressions, but then when the progression broke down, he could extend plays and the explosive plays Mm. just showed up. So, Coach, did he surprise you once you got going or did you have an idea that, that he could have this kind of success in his first year with the Eagles? Well, you know, I'm from Pittsburgh, and Phil's from Pittsburgh. We're from the same area back there, Pine Richland. It's a great great football area. Phil was a uh, tremendous high school player, so I had a pretty good feel for his athletic background, his competitiveness, his toughness. Uh, Phil is a winner. Uh, Football is very important to him. So when he came into the program, we knew that we had a guy that had a chance to be a special quarterback. what we needed to do was obviously coach him up, the fundamentals and technique, uh, get him acclimated into our system. And really, not until we mm-hmm. played Duke the first game did we know that, okay, we have a guy. We got a guy that when he steps across out those white lines, he is a winner, he is a ball player, and he is a leader. And really, as a play caller, it made it easier for myself to call passes because you knew that he would – work through the progressions, find the open receivers, and if it broke down, he'd extend plays. Coach, one of the things that was so impressive about BC, before we even saw you guys take the first snap, was that we're going through a pandemic, and we had the COVID testing going on, and you just didn't know who was playing, who was in, who was out. You just hoped to have games. I mean, there was just nothing that was guaranteed. But I think what mm. you guys accomplished as a program, new coaching staff, players buying in, going through a pandemic, the fact that there wasn't the positive test at BC, it was incredible what you guys accomplished. And I I can't emphasize that enough because that tells me that everybody was buying in to the top. And before you played the first game, in some respects, you had already won. Yeah, I tell you, uh, our players and coaches – have done an unbelievable job buying into Coach Halfley's culture. Um, Mm. I now understand why Boston College graduates are so successful on and off the field. Our guys are special. Uh, They are focused. They They are determined to do the right thing on and off the field. This is a special place, and Coach Halfley is building a championship culture It is more than just winning and losing on the field. It's about building trusting relationships, relationships that are going to last a lifetime. And there's exciting things happening here at Boston College. Uh, Frank, I know you've had a lot of stops in the National Football League, great 
college level. When you look at where kind of this is going to year two, uh, Mark and I have talked about Zay Flowers. We've talked about the offensive line in addition to Phil Jakovic. Where Where is your expectation with this unit uh, as we sit here in mid-June? Well, we have high expectations. We talk about it every day as an offense. We are capable of greatness. We're going to take it one day at a time. The foundation of our success is our fundamentals and techniques. We have a great group mm. of players. They are talented. They work hard. They pay attention to the details. They take it from the classroom to the practice field to the game field. Um, once again, it's all about us and uh, us working towards being our best. But when we step on that mm. field, we're very excited to get to training camp. We expect great things to happen. I know this much. You had a tight end last year that the rest of America found out pretty quickly. Oh, Hunter Long, dude, this guy is a Sunday Dude, I know you wish you had one more year with him or maybe four more years with him. Uh, you got so many weapons and the guy under center who can pull the trigger. But what about the tight end? Because I know that's always been a key component in your offense. Yeah, you know, we're an NFL-style offense. Uh, 12 personnel, the tight ends are vital in our system. It creates an extra gap in the running game. In the passing game, you can create matchups on linebackers and safeties based on if a defense is going to play base or sub-defense. Uh, you know how to call the mm. game to take advantage of it. You know, Hunter Long was a special player and a special guy. You know, he's a, he's a BC guy. These guys are special here. You know, they choose Boston College for the right reasons to be successful on and off the field. Uh, football is a terminal experience, as we all know. You know, academics is for a lifetime. Uh, and Hunter Long is a great example of a Boston College guy. So talented, uh, priorities in order, tremendous leader. It, it was just a pleasure to be around Hunter. And he fits our system, as all these tight ends do so well. Hmm. Coach, I, I, I'm curious as to how this kind of evolves now because with your NFL background and the variety of things you and Jeff can compare notes on offense to defense, the one thing, and I've had this discussion more often, I found it more often than I thought I would in this offseason, is how the NFL has kind of followed the college game here where base defenses now have five in the secondary, it seems like. What are you seeing in the evolution of the defensive side of the ball that allows that flexibility you have offensively to take shape. What's the what's the biggest challenge, I guess, when you when you're looking now at the at the four two five or the three three five alignments? Well, here's what I've seen. You know, I've coached with six NFL teams. I've been very fortunate, very lucky. The NFL has has taken some of the RPO game from college football and some of the quarterback mm -hmm. runs. Other than that. The National Football League is still about running the football, run action passes, situational football, with, you know, whether it's third down situations, red zone, two minute. And, you know, Coach Halfley is running the program here, just like the National Football League. And our yeah. offensive system and defensive systems are like the National Football League. Um, what I see is. We go into every week game planning. Who are we going to play? What do we have to beat? For instance, if we're going to put two tight ends on the field, how is that defense going to approach us? Are they going to be in base personnel, which means four down linemen, three linebackers, four DBs? Or are they going to put sub out there, which means take a linebacker off the field and bring a DB in? And then as a play caller and as an offensive staff, we know how to attack it to use our strengths. You know, once again, hmm. we are an aggressive, attacking, fearless offense where we want to put our players in a position to be successful and create explosive plays. Hey, Frank, one quick question yeah. for me before we let you go. On game sure. day, on game day, uh, how would you describe your demeanor? Are, are you out of your mind? Or are you calm, cool, no, and collect? cool and calm? Cool and calm, man. I, I'm, I'm sensing that you are going <laughs> ballistic <laughs> on game day. Me, That's what I'm let thinking. Me, let me, um, and honestly, that is a great question, Mark. Um, game day <laughs> is when you're at your best in terms of being cool and calm. Thinking clearly, that's why I like calling a game from the box. The press box is the best place to call the game because you're in a great environment away from the emotions of the game. Um, now, 
Sunday through Friday, <laughs> you are demand. You're, you're coaching details, <laughs> and you're demanding. And it's very important. We're demanding. We're not demeaning. But on game day, when the players cross that white line, it is all about those guys playing together and being their best. So, for instance, yeah. you know, there's times I won't even talk to the quarterback between series if everything's going good because I trust our mm. preparation throughout the week that they don't need to constantly hear Coach Signetti in their ear. Now, we talk about it all the time. We're going to play one play at a time. There's no such thing as perfect. There's no such thing as perfect in life. If we throw an interception, basically what I tell them is, it's not your first one. It won't be your last one. But I do want to know, hey, what do you see? Yeah. You know, and that's the key to coaching quarterbacks, other than really coaching the fundamentals, the techniques, uh, the pass game reads, the pocket movements. But <laughs> what made them make those decisions? You know, so you really want to ask, hey, what do you see so you can kind of get inside their mind? On game day, I'll tell you guys, if you ever get a chance to sit in the box with us, we have fun up there. And, <laughs> and, and the bottom yeah. line is we want to put our players in a position to be successful on game day, and that's where we got to be our best as coaches, staying cool, staying calm, and just dialing it up. Hey, let me tell you something. Wes is there busy calling games, but uh, just give me a call. I'd love to hang out there. I I'll bring some hot dogs, too. I'll <laughs> hey, feed you. Hey, we love <laughs> hot dogs up there, man. <laughs> All right. Hey, Frank, thanks. Be well, okay? We'll see you this fall. Frank Signetti, hey, Jr. is the offensive coordinator at Boston College. Appreciate the time. You bet.